It's August, back to school month, and families are preparing their kids to return to the classroom. But what do you do if you're a busy parent with no funds for new school supplies for your kids? Fortunately, Schoolhouse Supplies can help by providing free resources to students in need. On this segment of Community Hotline, we'll be telling you a little bit about how you can help support the kids in our community. With us today, we have the Executive Director of Schoolhouse Supplies, Alice Forbes. Alice, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming. So I'm sure you're very busy at this time of year, getting ready for uh, the new school year here in the Portland area. Um, I know that you've uh, been around for, I think since 1999, the school has, uh, Schoolhouse Supplies has been. Um, the need has never really diminished, I don't think. How do you see this year shaping up regarding the need locally for schoolhouse supplies? Well, like you said, there's there's always a need. Um, much as uh, we all wanna provide everything we can for our kids, some families aren't as fortunate and aren't able to do that. And that's where schoolhouse supplies steps in. And this year is a, I don't, I don't know, is it a double whammy, a triple whammy, um, where um, kids are going back to school um, for the first time in quite a while for many of them. And they're going into classrooms where um, when uh, Oregon uh, received a shelter in place order back in March of 2020, a lot of teachers had the foresight to clear out their classrooms and put together packages of supplies so their students would have supplies to work with at home. So that's one impact. You have the typical year that we, we've experienced since 1999, which is there's lots of students whose families can't afford school supplies. And we're here to help, help step in. And then this year, the impact of COVID is that the economic reality for a lot more families that they are struggling. Right, I, I, would, I would tend to agree with that. I think that there are more families that have lost income due to COVID. There may be their housing situation has changed. There's certainly more homeless people here in the area than we've ever seen before. And those kids have to go to school, right? So I, those are also kids you probably, you know, are looking to help. How do you get the school supplies that you collect to these children? How does that work? Well, back to school season, we have a couple ways we do that. Um, our biggest program is called the Free Store for Teachers. And that was the, that's how we started and we're still going strong. So teachers in uh, the five big Portland school districts who are at schools where 50% or more of the students qualify for free and reduced lunch come to the Free Store for Teachers and they shop for free supplies and they take them back to their schools. And between the classroom teachers and the school offices, they get the supplies out to the kids who need them. A lot of the supplies stay in the classroom for projects throughout the year. I can imagine that nobody would know better who needs them than the teachers, right? They're, they can see who's who, who doesn't have what they need when they come into the classroom. Um, and, and, and I imagine they have a way to do it that's, um, you know, doesn't make the kids the child feel singled out because that's so important to try to keep their self-esteem up, I think. At the majority of the schools we serve, nearly every student at the school qualifies for free and reduced lunch. So um, we certainly don't want any kids to stand out and we don't want there to be any stigma, but we really are trying to step in and help fill a little bit of that opportunity gap for for students and families at, at those neighborhood schools. That's a lot of kids. If you're talking about you know, over 50% of the, of the kids or more, um, what, what can you tell me, a, like, a, give me an example of, of a child that's benefited by this that maybe you've heard about or that you've actually seen yourself. You don't need names, but I just like to get a better feel for the kinds of kids you're helping. Yeah, we hear, we hear fantastic stories. We hear them from teachers. We hear them from students when we do have the opportunity to visit a school, um, which hopefully we'll be able to do again soon, um, visit a school and um, share supplies directly with students. Um, the students who are supported by Schoolhouse Supplies, the students who 
who live in our neighborhood and our communities. Um, they're from families that really care about them. They want to learn. They're trying really hard in school. And, you know, they just need the basic tools in order to kind of get a leg up. And these are kids who are uh, playing sports, have lots of aspirations, lots of hopes and dreams for great careers and great educations. And the way the community can help support them in their dreams and help them contribute to our community when they're bigger is to donate school supplies and make a financial contribution to schoolhouse supplies. And we'll make sure that we work with teachers and schools to direct those resources where they're needed the most. That's right. I have another question about that, but first I wanna ask you about uh, the teachers themselves, because from what I understand, the majority of teachers spend their own money on supplies for decorating the classroom, for special projects that the school isn't providing the resources for. Does that jive with what you, you've come across? Yes, and we actually uh, ask teachers this every year. We conduct a survey and we ask, how much of your own money did you spend? And whether it's here or in other similar communities around the country, teachers are spending between $500 and $1,000 each uh, of their own money right out of their own pocket um, to provide basic supplies for their students. And that's asking a lot, especially if it's a new teacher starting out who maybe doesn't have the, the you know, the, the salary to, to, to handle that, but they want to do a good job. So of course they do that, but this helps them too then because they're able to buy those supplies that they need as well. Correct. Oh, that's right. And, um, and that's why we call it the free store for teachers. And um, we, you know, the, it's like the collateral benefit. Um, we're here because the community wants to support local students but uh, we really want to make sure that teachers know that their community supports them too. Well, so important, especially if we want to keep good teachers. So you mentioned that we can support uh, schoolhouse supplies and the, the community and the children by making a financial contribution, by um, donating supplies. What kind of supplies will you take from the community and, and where do we take them? So oh, we, we would be happy to take any basic school and office supplies, art supplies, books. So if you remember your own or your child's school supply list, um, pencils, pens, erasers, markers, crayons, uh, spiral notebooks, composition books, all, all of the old favorites and the basics, um, we could really use them here at the schoolhouse supplies. And these would all be new, new items is what you're looking for? I assume. Yes, we um, we would greatly appreciate new items. Yeah. Uh, we we do often take uh, gently used items like a maybe a stapler or a hole punch, but um, for you know we want we want kids to have the best, and so um, think about you know what would you want for your own kids? That's what we want for the kids who get supplies from schoolhouse supplies. Besides, that was one of the most exciting things about going back to school, getting all those new things that aren't messed up yet. <laughs> you have a whole year to do that. Um, is there anything else that the community can do for, community can do for schoolhouse supplies to make this a, a successful drive this year and to, to keep promoting um, you know, and, and supporting the, the organization? Well, here at Schoolhouse Supplies, um, we're able to take our roughly a little over half a million dollar cash budget and turn it into about $3 million worth of free supplies that we provide back to the community every year. So um, I hope folks trust that when they make a financial contribution or donate school supplies to Schoolhouse Supplies that um, we're, we're good stewards of those resources and getting them out to kids who need them. So um, we, we also wanna say thank you to everybody that supported Schoolhouse Supplies for the last 21 years. And uh, we, we really appreciate the community support and uh, welcome volunteers. We welcome donors. Um, feel free to um, give us a call or um, send an email and we're happy to get to know you better too. That's great. Well, you do have a very good reputation in the community, so I, I'm, I'm sure that uh, people should trust your trust your judgment on how that money is spent and where it's going. Thank you very much, Alice, for sharing that with us. Anything else we need to know, or shall we just go out and uh, 
save our money to donate to Schoolhouse Supplies. Thank you so much, Monica. We appreciate the opportunity to share some information. You're very welcome. Thanks for watching uh, this segment of Community Hotline. Do check them out on their website and be generous. Our students need it. Thanks so much.